Hello, and welcome. Today, I'm going to be looking at, and building the Tamiya 148th Mosquito Mark 6. At the time of filming, it was the first Tamiya aircraft kit I've looked at, and I was interested to see if all the hype about Tamiya kits was true, or just modelers waxing lyrical about kits they love. So let's have a look at the kit, and without further ado, roll those titles. Upon opening the box, the first thing I notice, is the full-scale print of the camouflage, which allows you to cut it out and use it as a paint mask, which is a really nice touch. It also tells you the Tamiya colors needed for the camouflage pattern shown. I also notice how well cast the clear parts are. That's not to say that other clear parts from other kits are printed badly, just that these ones seem to be done particularly well. The only thing worth mentioning is the cockpit grooves aren't particularly deep, so even with canopy masks, this could prove hard to pick out properly. The parts are clearly and crisply cast, free from chaff and flash and have really great details. Even the small details have been reproduced really well. Attention has been paid to even the smallest details, such as the tire tread on the wheels, the brake lines on the undercarriage legs, and the inner wheel detail. The small details, in particular, these radio dials, and the bomb bay details, such as the fuel tanks are really great. The pilots are particularly brilliant, it's a shame I won't be using them. The panel lines are raised, and crisply detailed, showing various panels, recesses, refueling points etc. If I tilt the sprues, you can see the panel lines showing by the light. Now let's look at the decals. The first thing that strikes me is the red circles in the round doors are separate. I'm not sure why Tamiya do this, but it is a giant pain in the ass when the round doors could just be printed as one, and make sure they're center. The decals look nice, not too thick, although there is quite a lot of carrier film, which may need trimming off either before or after application. It's great to see seatbelt decals, as some of us don't like messing about with photo etch, and while decals don't look as good as photo etch, they are a good option for aircraft with closed canopies. The only issue I have, is with these decals. In my experience with mosquitoes, I have never been able to apply these without issue. I have also bought, for the first time, Tamiya paints. I previously resisted using them because of their propensity to need to be mixed, rather than having precise colors for precise needs, but given I was doing a Tamiya kit, and the exact colors I needed were available, I thought I would try them. And I'm glad I did. They changed my airbrushing experience from miserable to enjoyable. The improved results simply due to changing paint is evident further on in this video. Moving on to the build. Following the instructions, I started with the engine nacelles. These were airbrushed silver, before test fitting them, then gluing them together. The exhausts were then added, followed by the intake filters. There was a little bit of a seam line, which needed a little work, so I used AV Vallejo putty to fill it, let it dry, then sanded it flush. The insides of the nacelles were then airbrushed interior green, making sure to get into all the corners. The flappy bits were then added. Before painting the internal wires. It is likely that neither the wires, nor the inside of the wheel bay will be seen. But I still gave it some Tamiya panel liner to give it some contrast. I then glued the wing surfaces, adding the wing lights, and closing the wings off, adding Tamiya extra thin along seam lines where needed. 
Next up, the cockpit construction. I first up gave the interior parts a liberal coating of interior green, I then moved on to painting the interior details, applied the decals to the instrument panel, painted the radio the correct dial colors, as well as the fire extinguisher. The various cockpit sub-assemblies were then put together and painted where necessary. As well as adding to me a panel liner. While these were drying, I started on the Bombay details. The fuel tank straps and buckles were painted. To me a panel liner was added to give the recesses some depth and shadow. This was then cleaned using Tamiya X20 thinner, leaving panel liner in only the places I wanted it. The sub-assemblies were then put together to form the inner section of the mozzie. as well as details such as the seatbelt decals, the bombs, the hydraulic door struts, before adding the entire assembly to the fuselage, gluing it in place, and closing the fuselage up. Wing details were then added. Before the closed bomb bay doors were then added. The tail planes were then added and glued in place using Tamiya Extra Thin. As well as the .303 gun bay. before adding the open bomb bay doors. So now to the painting. Well, airbrushing. As always, I prime it, but because I'm going to be black basing and marbling, then I'm priming it AK Interactive's black third gen primer. This was applied thinned with Tamir X20A and coated evenly over the mozzie, in one complete layer and left to dry overnight. Next we draw on the camouflage lines. This is done with a soft pencil, to avoid taking off the primer, as has happened before. These were copied from the camouflage guide we talked about in the kit review earlier. And now to the marbling. I first start by airbrushing random patterns, making sure the black still shows through. The idea of black basing, or marbling as it's sometimes called, is to create a color with differing tonal variations over it. This is done over the entirety of the underside, making sure to leave the panel lines untouched, so the panel edges will be darker, and therefore stand out more. This is then coated with an over-thinned coat of the original color, and applied in layers, till I'm happy with the opacity. 
This gives you more control than spraying in thick layers, which runs the risk of covering your previous work. This process was then repeated with the RAF green and the medium sea grey. It's important to set your airbrush to about 8 psi when doing this kind of work, or the air pressure will cause spidering and blow the paint about. Trigger control is also very helpful, so if you don't have a needle locking mechanism, you may wish to practice first till you have your airbrush and pressure dialed into the sweet spot. After the blend coats were applied, I then freehanded the camouflage borders, so I could get a soft border between the colors, as was indicated on the box and reference pictures. No matter how good you are with an airbrush, or how good you are at masking, there will always be parts that need hand painting, so these were then done next. The jockey wheel was painted using a K Interactive Extreme Metal White Aluminium, and the rubber was simulated with tire black. The main wheels were then done in exactly the same way. before painting the hydraulic pump tanks Vallejo Red. These were then fitted according to the instructions. I then painted the cannons and .303s with German Grey. The exhausts were done with RLM26, which is a lovely deep rust red color, and the propeller blades were done with Tamiya flat black. The wheel bay doors were then added using Tamiya extra thin cement. It was then time to give it a gloss coat, ready for the decals. For this I used Mr. Hobby GX100 clear gloss, thinned with Mr. Color Leveling Thinner 3 to 1. The decals were then applied in the usual way. They were soaked in warm water. Microscale Microset was applied to the surface. The decal was slid into place. Positioned correctly, wiped over with a cotton bud, that's a Q-tip for our transatlantic viewers. And then finally, set in place using Microscale Microsol, which melts the decals into place. You may see a dulling of the paint color when using this, but this is temporary and only lasts till the Microsol evaporates. And so then, onto the weathering. First as always, the panel lining. For this, I use Tamiya Panel Line Accent Color Brown, and with the brush, I apply it to the corners and letting capillary action do its very pleasing to the eye thing. I usually clean it up with a brush with thinner on, but in this instance, I'm just going to wipe over it with a cloth, so it's important to be neat, so it can be cleaned easily. I wipe over it in and clean the remaining panel liner off, making sure it's all cleaned properly. Before moving on to wiping over the surface with Tamiya X20 thinner, ready for the oil paints. Abtilung 502 Brown is then brushed all over the thinner on panels like flaps, and places where dirt and oil would build up, 
before being blended with a big, fluffy brush with a quick, blending action to blend it into the surface. This is then gone over with a domed bristled brush, in this instance, a dry brush, which is ideal for blending oil paints as well as dry brushing. I then go over the top of the surfaces, where there would be any dirt or grime, and remove any oil paint that has been blended in an area I don't want it to be. Brown is then added to the fuel caps on each wing. This is put down with a wet brush, and streaked in the direction of airflow, away from the fuel caps. It is then wet blended so there is a softly visible layer, before adding more on top of that and blending it down a bit harder. Tamiya have helpfully put lines along the propeller blades to mark where the yellow stripes were painted. So these were then painted with RLMO4 yellow with a 10 over 0 brush. The wing lights were then added using microscale crystal clear. before being painted with AK Interactive 3rd Gen Clear Green and Clear Red. After that, all that was left to do was to remove the canopy masks, which was easier said than done, and touch up the parts where they had lifted the paint. So there it is. Reviewed and built, the Tamiya 148 Mosquito Mark 6. I hope you enjoyed this build as much as I did, but without further ado, here are the glamour shots. A big big thank you to all my channel members whose names you can see on the screen right now. Your support really really is appreciated and I really could not run this channel without your generous donations. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, comment and share as this really helps with the YouTube algorithm and the YouTube algorithm has changed recently so I need all the help I can get. Until next time my friends, adieu, stay safe and happy modelling.